Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word angel has a number of meanings. Translated, it simply means messenger. And anyone is a messenger if he delivers a message from God. Thus, our first lesson depicts an angel carrying the gospel of salvation to everyone on earth. Sometimes men are called angels. In Luke 7, verse 27, John the Baptist is called an angel. In Joshua 6, 25, the spies whom Joshua sent to Jericho and whom the prostitute Rahab hid are also called angels, for they carried with them the testimony of the true God of Israel. In the first chapters of Revelation, John is commanded to write letters to the angels of the seven churches. These angels are men, that is, the bishops or overseers of the seven churches. It is not to spirits that St. John writes, but to men the leaders of the congregations in those regions, who will publicly read the inspired words of St. John to their flock. Sometimes it is the divine Son of God himself who is called an angel. Frequently with the longer title, the Angel of the Lord. This happened in the passage with the burning bush, where the angel of the Lord spoke to Moses, and later in the same passage identified himself as Yahweh, the I Am. Sometimes, however, the word angel refers to a special class of beings who are spirits, like God, but are creatures of God, like man. Thus, the angel Gabriel, who appears in the book of Daniel and the Gospels, is neither a man nor God, but a created spiritual being. We also see these angels in the heavenly visions of Ezekiel, Isaiah, and the Apostle John, when they see the throne room of heaven. It is these angels, cherubim, who flank the mercy seat of God on the lid of the Ark of the Covenant. There are different kinds of angels. There are cherubim. It was a cherub whom God appointed to guard the Garden of Eden to prevent Adam and Eve from eating from the Tree of Life after the fall. It was cherubim whom Ezekiel saw in his vision, who stood guard by the temple with their wheels beside them. It is cherubim who stand on either side of God's heavenly throne, as they are carved on the Ark of the Covenant. There are also seraphim. Seraphim literally means burning ones. They are seen in Isaiah's vision. These are described as having three pairs of wings. One pair covers their feet, another their face, and they fly with the third. It is one of these seraphs who touched Isaiah's mouth with a burning coal and sacramentally cleansed the uncleanness of his mouth. The angel Gabriel we are familiar with. He came as a messenger to the prophet Daniel and to the Virgin Mary. To both of them, announcing the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the circumstances of his birth. 
Whether Gabriel is one of the cherubim or seraphim, whether he is a third kind of angel, or is a unique being among the angels, scripture does not tell us. But it shows Gabriel to have the office of a messenger. For he is sent to men to teach them the mysteries of the Christ's salvation. There is also the archangel Michael, who in Daniel 10 is also called a chief prince, and later the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. In the book of Jude, Michael is said to dispute with the devil over the body of Moses. And in Revelation, we are told that Michael fought a war in heaven with the devil. According to the Apocrypha, there are seven archangels and gives them names. However, in the Catholic canon, those books of the Bible, which have always and everywhere been accepted as authentic and true, Michael is the only archangel we know of. Beyond this, there are some who teach that Michael is not an angel, but another name for the Lord Jesus Christ. We will not argue here whether this is the truest interpretation or not, but whether Michael is the Christ himself, by another name, or a very great angel created by the Christ, it is certainly true that he is an image and type of the Christ. For he is called a great prince of the Lord's people, who defends God's people from the devil, even as the Christ fought against the devil and won by his death and his resurrection. Today, being the festival of St. Michael and all angels, we give God thanks for all the angelic beings which he has made. They not only announce God's truth to us, but they also serve and protect us. Angels are servants not only to God, but also to us, the saints of God. Remember how God guarded the prophet Elisha with an army of fiery angels in 2 Kings chapter 6. And our gospel text teaches that even the little children who believe in him are guarded diligently by angels. By little children, the text, of course, means every saint, every baptized Christian, whether young or old, is protected by this host of fiery angels. Hear what our Lord says. Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, every Christian has become as a little child. As a small child cannot care for himself, but trusts wholeheartedly in the compassion of his parents, so every true Christian is a little child before God, who cannot live except by God's mercy, and who trusts in God's compassion with his whole heart. Every Christian, whether young or old, must have this kind of a child's faith. These, these saints, are the little ones whose angels always see the face of the Heavenly Father. Therefore, we give thanks to God through our Lord Jesus Christ, that he guards and protects us from evil by the ministry and diligence of heavenly angels. 
If only we could see that they were there. But God has promised that they are. And we need not fear either man or devil if the angels of God guard us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.